This is Dolony TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and happy Ryan McLeod signing day. Oh, yeah, there we go. We got all good things reconsidered and figured out for the Edmonton Oilers as we head into yet another season. Obviously, today the first on ice portion of training camp yeah how good does that feel that feels amazing by the way um yeah so it's a good day in oiler country here so far um obviously if you missed yesterday's update and you still haven't seen it online this bakersfield condors jersey that's what your new away jersey for the oilers is going to look like essentially think of the reverse of the reverse retro wow who'd have thought Anyway, friends, it is a good time to be an Oilers fan because quite simply, there is a lot of competition at camp. There's a lot to be made and done with, and there's a lot that could happen here in the next two weeks that really determine what our Edmonton Oilers are going to look like to start the season. And I think that is the most exciting debate for Oilers fans to start the year is where and how does this team start the season roster-wise. But before we get there, folks, if you're new to the channel, or returning from past years and you aren't subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button in the next 5-10 minutes because I'd love to have you along for whatever crazy run we get up to that I promised last night. And secondary to that, we are now 20 subscribers away. 20 is the number entering this video from an all-time new high here on Dolony TV. So folks, with that said, Ryan McLeod, 798 triple zero after that and that's his contract for one year this year Bob Stoffers, well he he pretty much summed it up best saying well no leverage you get what you get and that's exactly what the Oilers did they found a way and there's two ways according to my method and according to the Puckpedia method that the uh, I think it's Daniel Nugent Bowman of the Athletic referenced uh, today saying that he could uh, find a roster on there on Puckpedia that gets to within 165 under the salary cap before enacting LTIR. So keep that in mind. Before enacting LTIR, the Oilers can get within $165 of maximizing the entire cap hits of Mike Smith and Oscar Clefbaum. That's just me. That's just me. So, what does that mean? Well, folks, let's quickly do the math here. $165, that sounds like we're cutting some corners, making some things happen. Well, we are, and I will show you that picture first off, but as we'll take a second here to also celebrate the fact that, yes, Ryan McLeod's back with the Oilers. It was never in doubt. It was just a question of how, when, and where, and the Oilers do it the first day of training camp, get them on the ice, and away you go. So that's a good thing. Uh, the Oilers doing that 798 right there, and you'll see it on this graphic as well. Let me get the graphic up, and then let me go talk to you in another panel away from this graphic. There we go. Let's throw that there, and let's scoot over here, and let's get it done, shall we? So the Oilers, 165 is what Puckpedia and The Athletic promised. Now let me read just quickly what their conditions under that roster were. Key point two, I don't really have much to do with the athletics, so let's just pretend like I read it, even though I didn't. Um, Edmonton will be $165 under the cap with a 21-man roster. If they have Holloway, Broberg, Malone, and Murray on the team, Samarukov, Shore, and one of Yanmark or Ryan waived. All right, that's your conditions. Holloway, Broberg, Malone, Murray. Okay, interesting. Well, there's a way to build this roster, and you can get it to within $167. And this is all about how you believe camp competition is going to play out. Who has the most to gain from playing their hearts out? Who has the most to lose from playing badly? And who has the most to kind of find a roster spot, even if they have a ho-hum camp, just because of their contract? This is the tricky part. I spent about 10 minutes finicking around with this, just trying to find that perfect mix to get within that $165 range, and I could get to $167 with this roster. We're talking about an $82.5 million cap, and I was able to get within $167, two bucks off the best case scenario. 
and this is not worst case scenario. So we did something right, I think, not to my own horn. Kane McDavid, Pugliarvi across the top line. I kind of did the forwards just to throw it in some people's faces too. Hyman, Drysaddle, Yamamoto on the second line. Nuge, McLeod, Holloway on the third line. Yes, it is true. No matter what you want to do, if you want to build a roster that's going to win opening night for the Oilers, you have to have Dylan Holloway on there. That is the math that works out. Clearly, you could have some of the other rookies on there as well, and you could probably finick the math around there to be $144. Didn't really try it, but no one's going to believe me and say the Oilers are going to do it if I say Matvey Petrov's going to be on the third line left wing to start the season. Nobody's going to believe that. Nobody's going to think that's a reasonably thought-out roster. So, I gave you as best I could. And this, keep in mind, also keeps Fogel and Pugliarvi around. Don't kid yourself. That is a possibility. You've got Benson, Ryan, Fogel, Malone. Those are your bottom four forwards. Okay, Tyson, it's a bit of a stretch. You got Tyler Benson on there. Again, the contract is what works key here. And yes, I don't have an extra defenseman. I have an extra forward. But what works key here is the fact that you've got somebody or two somebodies or three somebodies or four somebodies or five somebodies or six somebodies, depending what you think of Pooley, Harvey, Holloway, Fogel, Ryan, Benson, and Malone, who all need to have a good camp. Now, here's the thing. All these guys have a good camp. And you can build a forward core with your defense already in tow and your goaltending already intact and your LTI already calculated that gets you within $2 of the best case scenario that anyone can come up with. Okay? All right. So, again, under these conditions, Sam Rukov is waived. Shore is waived. You've got, of course, one of Yanmark or Ryan waived. You can still technically fit Yanmark into that fourth line slot and not lose anything off that 167. The reason I chose Derek Ryan is he has the most to gain from having a good camp. If he has a good camp, he solidifies his spot and holds on to his spot. And again, you then have a coin flip between which of the two, Yanmark and of course Ryan, for having that 1.25 million that is key to getting under $200 away from the cap. This is the math that is absolutely stupid. I love it. I have not had this much fun with Oilers math in a while, and I'm living for it every second I'm doing this video. Now, Fogel on the right wing. Well, again, you can ease things for yourself a lot if you trade one of Pugliarvi or Fogel. And again, you can say who your preference is there or not. This is not the video I'm debating that. What I'm saying here is you could probably formulate a multitude more rosters within 500 to zero dollars of the 82.5 million dollar cap if one of those guys is gone 100 percent you could because now suddenly you're talking about an extra two three contracts you could sneak on there Xavier Borgo if he has a good camp and this is on that and that bang done good and there you go that's the thing this roster does not allow for a lot of guys to have a good camp clearly though you could still give up $12,000 of cap space. I don't know why you would on the LTR. And you could go out there and work Ryan Murray into the defense. You could, technically, and you'd give up literally like $13,000 max. But again, if you're talking about maximizing LTR, or giving yourself as much flexibility against the cap as you possibly can, this is the ultimate competition roster. If everybody who has nothing to lose by having a great camp, everything to gain by having a great camp. This is who you use to make that roster happen opening night, 21 guys. That, that's who I think. But honestly, being an Oilers fan who's cheered for this team through thick and thin since 0506, but secondary to that as well, don't forget, we've endured some tough years since Connor McDavid's been drafted as well. And I've been doing this whole YouTube gig since 18, or 17, uh, 18, 19, 18, 19. You got to think about it in the fact of, right, there's a Brad Malone on there. There's a Tyler Benson on there. There's still a Yessa Pugliarvi and a Kyler Yamamoto on there. There's Philip Broberg and Evan Bouchard on there. You've got Stuart Skinner on there. 
And look at that, isn't it glorious? So that's the fun part about this for the Oilers is there's a ton of storylines just in the young guys, the older guys that we've had hanging around a long time that we can build a roster opening night where if everybody comes in and really impresses, the guys that have been here the longest are the guys that are going to get you the tightest to the cap. That feels good. And again, again, I guess that's probably, you want the real honest answer as to why Derek Ryan's there and not Matthias Janmark? Simply because Ryan's been here longer and, right? You get it. I got a soft spot. I'm Tyson. This is Stall on TV. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan McLeod signs and the math is ever fun. I am up on, out of here. If I can.